Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and welcome to my tier list for Hero Leak Season 2. Um, as you'll see, actually, I'll pop over for just a second here, but I've got this whole revamped tier list uh, structure that we're going to go through in this video. I think it's going to be really helpful. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Um, breaking it down by role as opposed to just doing all the heroes tiered all together. I think it gives you a better insight into what you're actually picking and it's more digestible. So hopefully it will be good. We're going to spend about 20 minutes, I think, in this video. Go through every single hero and just give a line or two kind of telling you how they're doing and, and why they're in the tier they're in. Um, and yeah, I'm also going to comment on uh, the meta as well. Uh, particularly as we're going into Season 2 of Hero League. I think this is the time when a lot of people are going to be jumping in and playing a lot of their games. You know, getting their placements, uh, earning their rewards. Um, and I mean a lot of big changes just came in we're going to talk about how that's changed and what to expect out of each of the roles going through uh, this particular meta game anyway that is enough of an introduction let me turn this webcam off let's dive into Photoshop properly let's start off talking about the Warriors all right well here we go we got the Warriors and I feel that Warriors at the moment are actually in a really good spot um, there's so many warriors who are very strong, very balanced. I mean, even looking at the tiers down here, uh, compared to, you'll see some of the other roles, uh, even these tier three warriors, any of them really can be picked in specific niche situations. I would say, generally speaking, what we see is as we move down the tiers, it's more that the warriors become more and more niche uh, and less generally applicable. And that's the main thing. Also, as we go into this um, tier list as well, I need to say this too. Um, you know, well, number one, it's my opinion, so it might not be perfect, but that's okay. But more importantly, uh, it is for, like, high-level uh, Hero League, so it'll be mostly for Master Grandmaster. A little bit less, but mostly true for Diamond as well. Then a little less for Platinum, good bit less for uh, Gold, a lot less for Silver, and then it will barely apply to Bronze at all. And generally speaking, what you'll see when you go down to the lower leagues, or as you progress down the lower leagues, uh, heroes that are difficult to play will drop down in tiers, and heroes that are easy to play will go up. Um, for example, I mean in bronze, like ETC, for example, is quite difficult to play. I'd say he's probably rated lower, whereas Johanna is easy to play, so she'd be rated higher. Anyway, anyway, let's dive into this and uh, go. So, tier 1, we have Tyrael. Tyrael is amazing. Um, Tons of health, survivability, utility, mobility, decent, sort of moderate-ish damage. He can be a bruiser or a main tank. Uh, and Sank is just so good at protecting melee assassins and diving heroes. And they're still quite powerful at the moment in the meta, so he's good. ETC is probably the warrior you're going to see banned the most, particularly in the second ban phase, because he is kind of insane. He has insanely good ganks, insanely good pick potential. Uh, and Mosh Pit, obviously, is always a threat uh, for stopping teams. Now, it's difficult to pick him at the start of a draft because Mosh Pit can be countered. But later in the draft, if they're lacking Mosh Pit counters, uh, he can be quite brutal. So you'll see him banned a lot. He's very strong. Next up, we have Muradin. This is the old stalwart Muradin. Can't beat him. Can't go wrong. He's just always a really solid warrior. Very survivable. One of the most survivable heroes in the entire game. And he's pretty flexible now in terms of his talents as well. You can build into more like uh, crowd control. You can get more damage, more survivability, whatever you want. There's a lot of ways to tweak Muradin's playstyle. And he's a nice, solid, all-around hero. Finally, we got a new Barak. I actually got a split tier one, kind of these four and these three. I'll tell you why in a second. But a new Barak, he's probably the premier anti mage uh, warrior, which is a little bit less important now in this season, I feel, but he's still pretty damn good. Uh, for example, going up against Li Ming or Jaina, uh, his beetles that he spawns block their skill shots and really ruin their day. Dampen Magic level one helps him uh, survive a lot of burst damage as well. And he's got pretty good survivability with his shield, with his locust swarm. He's a great hero. Very powerful ganks as well, with two kind of very strong aoe stuns as well not very strong but you know two aoe stuns built into his base kit pretty damn nice the reason i say tier one is split into these two i think it's something that's really interesting about warriors is that generally speaking people tend to val they undervalue double warrior compositions and they tend to just pick one warrior and then they love picking like three ranged assassins and you just face palm because often it's not the best thing at all um but anyway you'll see these four i feel most often they're the most commonly picked and they're very popular you'll see these three heroes picked much less but i think that these are still really really strong we have rexar rexar actually is a bit of a strange one he's not quite solo warrior material whereas as you'll see most of the heroes in fact in the top i would say like half here of our tier list are solo warriors not so much rex are but he's very powerful uh one-on-one -on -one, very powerful laner can't get rid of him uh he's good at doing merc camps as well um 
I think it'd be quite strong and stuff like Black Brax's holdout, for example. Uh, it could be pretty good on that map because you know you've got these smaller holding those points, much like on Dragon Char is quite strong. Very powerful hero, very high win rate. One of the least played heroes though in the entire game. One of the least played, but he does really well when he is picked. Uh, so yeah, check out Rexar. Next up we have Arthas. Arthas is fantastic. He does a lot of damage for a warrior, very high damage warrior, and he brings this sort of constant CC and this sort of aura around him. Quite survivable as well, decent damage. He's pretty fantastic. I love this guy. Um, he obviously works very well. You can draft him as a second warrior for as like a kind of bruiser type hero. Very good at denying um, sort of like any enemy, enemy melee assassins and warriors who have to come through all that AOE that he's doing and the damage he puts out in melee range. Uh, and yeah, he can even work as a solo warrior in those sort of circumstances. Uh, it depends. He's pretty flexible. I like it. Then finally, on tier 1, we've got Diablo. Diablo also does a ton of damage. Got two very powerful heroics, which kind of change how he plays, either going for the big AoE stuns or the big AoE damage. Uh, and yeah, he can work kind of as a solo warrior. Going to be kind of rare when you've got the other ones here. But he also works really well as a second warrior too, doing a lot of damage. Um, his pick potential, his ganks are pretty damn powerful as well. Uh, you know, I feel like my ETC has better ganks. And Uber Axe are similar enough, I guess, but a bit harder to pull off. But Diablos are very, very strong. So do make the use of, out of that, like this powerful early game hero. And a straight is useful into the late game. Pretty nice. We've got tier two here. Uh, and all these tier two heroes are pretty good as well. Stitches, obviously fantastic uh, in Hero League. Uh, I really do like this guy. Not as generally useful, I suppose, as these tier one guys, but he's still pretty damn good as a sort of niche hero. If the enemy team is going to be vulnerable to hooks, then pick up Stitches and you can wreck face. I mean, if they've got something like, I don't know, Zagara or Jaina, some sort of immobile hero that's going to get caught out and can't escape when you hook them in, Stitches is going to be a really nice pick. Next, we have Johanna. I'm actually kind of, ex I'm curious about Johanna. Johanna might move up, to be honest with you. I'm not entirely sure where she's going to go but um yeah i mean she's just very tanky extremely tanky uh she brings a blind as well so she's gonna be very good against basic attack type heroes she's also now free to take up reinforce which is her form of block at level one now that knight takes pawn it's just been worked into her base kit um so i do think we'll see when we come to the assassins that right clicking type heroes are going to be more powerful now this season and johanna's going to be good against them so we'll see exactly how she does but i think she should be pretty strong then we've got Cho. Cho is criminally underrated, in my opinion. I think with Cho Gal, you have this in interesting interaction. I mean, let me put it this way. If you've got a Grandmaster and a Bronze player playing Cho Gal together, like, who do you want on Cho? Who do you want on Gal? Simple answer is you want the Grandmaster on Cho and the Bro Bronze player on Gal because, well, the Cho is the one who controls the direction and where they go, and that's probably one of the biggest impacts you can have. Cho is one of those characters you can really carry on, whereas Gal is quite difficult to carry on, but certainly I've seen Cho Gal being extremely effective at the top levels of Hero League because you have someone who's like Master Grandmaster queuing up with someone who's like High Diamond or Low Master uh, with them on Gal, and it can wreck face. It can absolutely destroy people, and it is surprisingly difficult to counter, particularly later in the draft, I'd say especially because people love to grab their assassins and everything and specialists like early in the draft, and if they pick three assassins or specialists, then you pick up Cho Gal and ban out Leoric. They're kind of screwed, <laughs> basically. They're kind of screwed. I mean, you can pick Karazim, but he's very easy to counter at Molten Block, level 13 for Cho, so there you go. Very underrated, but very powerful. I've seen him win so many games in Hero League. Insane. Next up, we have Leoric. Uh, I I don't know. I'm considering moving Leoric down to Tier 3. He's very good against Double Warrior, but the issue is, and the reason I'm thinking of moving him down, is that Double Warrior is so rare. Uh, so, yeah, bear that in mind. But if you're looking for Leoric, he brings decent wave clear. Hard to get rid of him in the lane. He's sort of like Zul in terms of soaking lanes, but worse than Zul. But then he brings in, like, nice, pretty tanky presence in the team fight. Very good against warriors. And Entomb can wreck face as well. If they've got heroes that can't escape from an Entomb, can be pretty powerful. He can solo warrior. Hero League, though, I wouldn't really recommend it. Certainly not when you've got all these other ones available to you. We come to Tier 3, and we've got some very niche heroes. Poor old Sonia down in Tier 3. I Sonia was my most played and my most one-on hero in Season 1. So I'm really sad to move her down here. Uh, it's kind of like the reverse Kerrigan effect, right? Where she got a, a few small nerfs, or apparently small nerfs, that have actually translated into a really harsh nerf, actually. Uh, her win rate is terrible at the moment. She's really not doing very well. Personally, I, I think one of the big issues is, you know, why pick Sonya when you can pick someone like Arthas or Diablo? I feel that these guys are just doing what she does, but better. It's sort of high damage, but also warrior type hero. Now, there is a place for her, a niche. She is probably the best warrior at doing things like merc camps and objectives. Um... And yeah, I mean, she does probably more damage than the rest of them as well, just a little bit. 
So she's certainly possible to pick her up. She can do a good job. I'd say just most of the time, though, you're going to be looking at one of these other warriors instead. But she can work as a second warrior, second uh, as a bruiser. She can be good, but not doing great at the minute. So, yeah, tier three, unfortunately. Same thing with Dehaka. I feel Dehaka, we really want to run him as a bruiser. Uh, he doesn't have any engage. He doesn't really have much escape. He, j he doesn't really just function well as, like, a, a solo warrior at all. But if you run him as a, a bruiser, he can be pretty good. And he brings a global presence. And that's mostly what you're going to pick him for. It's like, do we want a global presence? Uh, for some example, somewhere like Sky Temple, maybe, or Cursed Hollow. I don't know, something like that. It could be pretty effective. So, yeah, do watch out for Dehaka. There's a place for him. Uh, he's just not going to be super common, but if you want a global presence on a warrior, on your bruiser, then go for it. Next up, we've got Chen. Uh, Chen is sort of similarly to these guys. He's got very weak initiation uh, and engagement. He's got very little CC, so he does struggle as a solo warrior, but it might be a place for him as a bruiser. Um, he does have a decent win rate, so I'm considering that, but yeah, I'm not too sure about this guy. We'll see how things go, but I would say... Probably don't want him when you got everything else. And then finally, Artanis. Right, the worst of the bruisers here. Uh, definitely not good enough to sow the warrior. He's got no engage or CC, really, what to speak of. Um, he's obviously very unkillable in certain comps, and that's his big strength. Particularly against mages with, like, phase bulwark, something like that. He can be pretty damn good, so do watch out for Artanis. And there we go. All right, let's take a look at the assassins right here. And there we go. So assassins. Assassins have been changed the most. So this is the part of the tier list that might also change the most over the coming month or so. Uh, as they try to work stuff out, we also have like a reworked Butcher, a reworked Vala, and then a new hero in here, which will really shake things up as well. So uh, I will, we'll see how this goes uh, as we go into the season. But this is how I think it's going to be. I have to say as well that assassins... Ha, are probably in the weakest spot they've been overall. I think it's very funny. I've got Li Ming in tier one, uh, at the top of tier one, in fact. She hasn't been buffed. Um, <laughs> in fact, it's just that everyone else has been nerfed so much that she's now back up to the top again, which is kind of funny. But anyway, here we go. Li Ming, top of tier one, super reliable mage. Uh, she's just good in nearly every circumstance, and that matters so much. She's incredibly powerful and useful. So yeah, Li Ming. Kerrigan, much the same she's been at the end of season uh, one as well. Very powerful melee assassin. Uh, great at getting picks and does good AoE damage in team fights, and fairly tanky as well. Very powerful hero, very scary, and pretty damn strong. Next up, we've got the Butcher. I'm not entirely sure where he's going to end up, but I'm guessing he's going to be Tier 1. I'm guessing he could be pretty insane. Um, obviously, the Butcher's weaknesses are lack of mobility and lack of escape and chase. Um, I think the thing with the Butcher is that at the start of Season 1, I don't think he would have been good. But at the end of Season 1, at the moment, his win rate is actually incredibly high at top levels of play. Like, something like almost 60%. Something crazy. I think the reason is that people just got used to playing with other melee assassins. I mean, with the rise of Kerrigan, Greymane... Uh, I mean, Illidan was there as well. Melee Assassins became really pa uh, popular towards the end of Season 1, and people got used to playing, you know, supportive team comps to help them out, like playing support heroes to help them out, warrior heroes to help them out, positioning to work well with the Melee Assassin. I think that sort of mindset, those skills are going to translate really well to helping the Butcher. He's going to have insane damage potential now, and Lamb to the Slaughter just ensures you're going to get a pick. It's such a good heroic. So I am. he also has great wave clear too, uh, so he's going to function well, I think, Fairly decently as a solo laner, maybe. Uh, even being able to potentially duo soak some lanes with certain talent builds, kind of similar to Zul. Uh, and then, you know, he could also roam with the four-man team and get some powerful ganks off. And yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see how the Butcher pans out, but I think he could be extremely strong. We'll see how it goes. Next up, we've got Thrall, much like Li Ming. Thrall's like the melee assassin version of Li Ming, just really consistent, solid, always useful. Brings a lot of self-healing. He's very much like a bruiser as well. He brings, you know, initiation with Sundering, which is one of the best heroics in the game. Uh, one of the best solo laners in the game. Just, I mean, like Li Ming and Thrall, you can just pick him up at the start of the draft and it really can't be countered too much. A little bit, but not too much. It's, they're just going to be safe, solid picks that are always good. So, so good. So there you go. Nice poking as well, especially for interrupting channels, stuff like that with the lightning. Next up, we have Lunara. She does crazy sustained damage during team fights, just crazy spread damage across all the different heroes. She's got good poke. And then if you talent into it, level 7, Nature's Culling. Brings incredible siege damage as well for both pushing and depushing lanes. So, yeah, Lunara is fantastic and very underrated in my opinion. 
Next we have Jaina. Uh, and Jaina is pretty good. I think she's in a good spot at the moment. She does quite a lot of damage, a lot of burst damage. Not as much as Li Ming, but she brings more utility than Li Ming does. Those slows can be really, really nice. Uh, really ruin melee assassin's days as well, being slowed down like that or being zoned out by the blizzard. Uh, Ring of Frost can just win team fights. It's an insanely powerful heroic. Or Water Elemental if you want to be more uh, consistent. But yeah, Jaina is great. I like her a lot. Watch out for Jaina. We got Falstad here. He's been nerfed a lot in this patch. So I'm not entirely sure how he's going to end up. I think he'll still be tier one. He still has the global mobility. He still has really good wave clear. He still has uh, Mighty Gust, which is one of the most useful heroics in the game. And, you know, it's still pretty decent damage as well during the team fight. So, yeah, I think Falstad will probably still be tier one. But he won't be as dominant as he was during season one, thanks to those nerfs. Next up, we got tier two. I've moved Rainer up actually quite substantially in this tier list. I feel like with a lot of these assassins being nerfed, we're actually going to see some of these other assassins kind of rising up. These other uh, more sustained damage ones, like particularly with like Rayman being nerfed and stuff like that. Uh, Rainer can actually has a, has a time to shine. He has a time to shine. Be particularly good against double warriors, I think, as well, or just you know double warrior, maybe double support even, where you're going to have these longer fights. He's going to do really well there. There's a lot of sustained damage. Uh, more focused than Lunara, more single target focused than Lunara is during team fights. A Hyperion is really good, uh, and yeah, I think Rainer's in a good spot. His wave clear is terrible, but if he fits into a team, I think he could be a nice addition. Next up, we got Chromie. I personally think Chromie is going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, however, you know, I don't know, people tend to overestimate how good Master and Grandmaster players are. There's a lot of them that can't play Chromie very well. However, when you do get someone who's very good at Chromie, I think Chromie is going to be insanely good. Her burst damage is fantastic. I mean, with like Tracer and Greymane getting nerfed, they're two of the heroes that are so good against her. And that's pretty, it's pretty great to, to be able to, to bring Chromie out a bit more often now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, her damage is just insanely high if you're able to pull it off. So watch out for Chromie. I'm personally going to be playing a lot of her myself. I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we've got Illidan. Uh, the hilarious case of Illidan, who without any nerfs has dropped from being like the most powerful hero in the game to being kind of tier two, pretty much, in terms of Hero League. Uh, I think the issue is that people are more comfortable countering him than they are playing with him. That's something I've noticed, but he is still very good, uh, very solid hero if you're going to get a draft that works with it. But do be aware, people really do know how to counter this guy now, so watch out for that. But I mean, like I would put it this way, in pro play, he's still banned nearly all the time, so that says a lot about how powerful he can actually be. we got Alarak next, and I'm, I'm really unsure where Alarak is going to go. Obviously, his wave clear is pretty bad. But his ganks are insane, like insane. He's like the king of the ganks of the assassins. He's going to be really, really good at that and pretty disruptive in team fights as well. So I'm going to pop him in tier two at the moment. We'll see how he goes. I mean, I could see him going either way, honestly, but he seems like he'll have a pretty reasonable spot, but we'll work it out. And as people learn how to play him better and get more games on him, we'll see how things go. Similarly enough with Vala as well, I'm not entirely sure how good she's going to end up being. Honestly, I feel that it's not going to be a super it'll be a little bit of maybe an increase to her power after the recent changes on the ptr which buffed up some of her stuff so she might be a bit better than she was before i think the most mostly though what we're going to see with vala probably is that people are just going to be playing her more and we'll start to appreciate her more but she's always been a pretty good hero um but yeah she's more focused now on the sort of sustained damage and the longer fights i uh, will see how it works out again i'm also not entirely sure where she's going to end up same thing with all of these reworked heroes because we have to actually test them out in these top level hero league games and see in actual practicalities how it works out but i'll have that completely updated and locked down for these guys uh in the next uh video if Tyke is here in tier 2, really great shredding warriors, uh, zoning with the laser, pretty flexible, pretty great hero. He's always been a good solid uh, range assassin since his rework and nothing has changed. Kelthus here as well, uh, not as good I feel as the other burst mages, but still pretty good against these melee stacks with that spreading bombs. Uh, his Q build is also pretty decent now. Uh, and yeah, I mean, he's certainly been nerfed a lot from where he was, but he's still a solid pick overall, just... Uh, generally speaking, he's not going to be your go-to unless the comps sort of work out in such a way and the bands and picks and such that you kind of go on to him. But he can be picked. Same thing with Zeratul. He's going to be pretty niche, but if it is the niche, he's going to be good. I mean, if they're vulnerable to him assassinating you, it's going to be very powerful. If you've got something like, I don't know, maybe with the Jane and with Ring of Frost and you're both like confident you're good players, you could combo them together very, very well. It can be pretty brutal, the Void Person into Ring of Frost combo. It's uh, pretty epic. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he's difficult to play and a bit difficult to fit into some team comps. So it depends, really. You're not going to see him as much as the other heroes, but he could be very good. 
finally we got tier three and these are the weakest uh assassins i think overall i i do like nova actually quite a lot myself um but i feel like she is going to be more niche again uh you're not going to pick her up too often um but uh i mean certainly when you do pick her up she could be pretty good you obviously want to draft her on top of a team that's pretty good with the four heroes on their own to free you up to kind of roam around and get some ganks and stuff but uh yeah i mean maybe maybe nova but generally speaking you're not going to see her too often similarly with Greymane, he's been nerfed a lot uh I don't know, I, I don't feel he's that great anymore. He's okay, but he's not nowhere near as good as he was during Season 1. Um, you can maybe play him as a ranged assassin, but if you're doing that, I don't know why you wouldn't play like Lunara or Jaina or Li Ming or something like that. Uh, or Raynor or Chromie. There's just a lot that do it better. And in terms of melee assassins, like I don't know. I feel like the Butcher might be the new Grey main, but we'll see how things go. Tracer, I also feel, has been over-nerfed. I think she's pretty difficult to play now. Um, I don't know, if you're a really good Tracer player, then yes, she's pretty good. If you're just dabble in Tracer, then no, I'd say don't pick her, probably. But uh, yeah, I just feel that she'd be nerfed a bit too much, honestly. And she's a little bit on the weak side, unless you're an exceptionally good Tracer player. Gul'dan, similarly, he's pretty much on the weak side. Good sustain and good, like, sustained AoE damage. But I mean, he's just like a weaker Thrall, in a sense, I feel like. Or a weaker Lunara. I don't know. I, I just feel like there's nothing that really shines about him yet. But you never know. We might see over the course of the season that people start finding those sort of niche comps or maps where he does shine. Not expecting it yet too much, though. And then finally, Gal already talked about him. So let's move on. All right, for supports. I feel like supports are actually... This is probably the tier list I'm most confident in here because there's so few supports. And typically, you want one main healer, and that really dictates... Um, kind of the tier list and how it's going to work out here so tier one we've got bright wing super high win rate she's just super super powerful great sustained healing over the fight global presence polymorph really effective against melee assassins or bruisers as well um i mean polymorph ganks as well are a thing she's pretty nice gets burst protection with the pixie dust especially with the uh the shielding dust or whatever it's called the ability damage shield spell shields dust that she gets at 13 the upgrade for that pretty damn good at that yeah she's fantastic in hero league no doubt about it Oriel, same thing. Uh, oh, they both, sorry. Brightwing also has got decent wave clear-ish. Uh, but yeah, Oriel also has pretty good wave clear. She's good at defending people. Uh, just really nice utility. Never runs out of mana. She doesn't have any. Um, but yeah, she's doing really well in Hero League. Uh, I think she's going to be tier 1 as well. And then finally, we got Rhaegar. I'm kind of curious to see whether Wolf Run at level 1 is going to be just uh, mandatory from now on, which is improving his Ghost Wolf speed to what it was before this patch, because it did get reduced by 10% uh, with the mount nerfs, which kind of sucks. But apart from that, I mean, he's still just as good, and his dominance has always been just such a great all-around hero with AoE healing, with single target burst, with ancestral, mobility, utility, wave clear. He's got it all. I think these these three really stand out above the rest. I mean, actually skip to Uther in tier two here. I think Uther is probably the other main healer that you're going to be picking up if for some reason you can't get one of these three. Or if you really want that divine shield to, uh, you know, empower your melee assassins, could be pretty powerful. I think he's pretty decent. Don't think he's as good as these guys, but he's still pretty good. We've got Tarant. She can be a solo healer and Tassadar in certain niches as well. Both really nice heroes. Also fantastic at being the second support. And I really like them in that role. Uh, so yeah, I think they're both very good. Lili actually in tier three. I'm kind of curious to see Lili in like a double support kind of meta, especially against the melee assassins like, for instance, the Butcher could be pretty powerful there. Um, but generally speaking, her healing is a bit slow, um, so I don't think she's really tier 1 or tier 2 material overall, but there could be some niches for her. Karazim, similarly, I don't feel like you want to pick him. He's too hard to play, difficult for him to work as a melee support, reliant on his basic attacks in the current meta, I feel. He's not doing very well. But if you're super stuck, <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why you would be, but if you were, or if you really like him, then maybe. Uh, Morales, she can be very good. I actually think that she's got a... She's like, generally, you're not going to want her, but in certain niches, she could be insanely strong if they don't have the dive to get on top of her, or if they have a lot of single target focus that she's going to be able to heal up and deal with. She can be insane. She obviously struggles with AoE healing, uh, and positioning can be compromised. So you won't see her too often, but she can be pretty good. Malfurion, I just think he sucks, honestly. Like, his roots are great, don't get me wrong, and he can spec into great wave clear at level 1, but his healing is very slow, so I'm really not taking up on him. And then finally then, let's dive into the uh, specialists, <laughs> not the supports, the specialists. And as you'll see, a very divided thing here. I think this is really funny. Um, but tier 1 specialists, these are guys are all very powerful at the moment. Sergeant Hammer, 
one of the highest win rates in the entire... I think she probably still is. I didn't check before I made this video, but I think she is still the highest win rate in the entire game in Hero League. Really, really good. Uh, again, with the assassins being nerfed, um, it's allowing Sergeant Hammer, and with Sergeant Hammer being buffed, it's allowing her to really start kicking ass. It can be very difficult to deal with a Sergeant Hammer. I think she's great. Same thing with the Lost Vikings. Well, they've always been insanely good. They still are. Get a huge XP lead. It's really hard to come back. They just win games. They win games all the time. Really nice hero. Watch out for them. They've they've always been at the top. We have Zagara down here now. She was nerfed quite a lot in the patch, like 10% damage nerfs on a bunch of her abilities, stuff like that. So I'm curious to see how she's going to end up. I think her win rate was still so high that even with these nerfs, she'll still be insanely good. Uh, brings great pushing power, great lane power, um, solid team fight damage as well and Vision as well with the creep. Very, very useful hero, very powerful. Two very good heroics as well. So yeah, I think Zagara is still gonna be one to watch out for. Not as dominant as she has been though, but still probably pretty damn strong. We'll see exactly. Sylvanas, as strong she's always been. A um, Bit of a win more hero sometimes, you know, like, okay, you get a Punisher and then you push in with Sylvanas, it does a ton of damage, but it's like, sometimes it can be difficult to get it because her trait isn't helping you until that point. But she's just a really nice hero. Great, does quite a lot of damage actually. And yeah, like when you combine her with pushing power, it's gonna be nuts. Excited to try her and Braxis hold out, could be pretty powerful there too. Zul, similar to Sylvanas in some ways, but as a more defensive hero, very, very powerful at soaking, like roaming between two lanes. He can deal with two lanes on his own, which is very useful. Uh, he brings a lot of control as well in team fights, though his damage is pretty bad, all things considered, uh, like compared to the other options, like in specials and assassins, that is, I should say, or bruisers. Um, but yeah, I mean, he can be pretty good. Uh, interesting to see how he's going to fare against stuff like the Butcher and Kerrigan and stuff like that. That could still be really powerful uh, here with his attack speed slow and his W and his roots. Could be pretty nice. I, I think he's still tier 1. I think he's good. In tier 2, we've got Medivh. Medivh, I feel, is probably the hardest character to play in the entire game. So if you are really good at Medivh, he's going to be excellent. If you're not that good at Medivh, he's going to probably be pretty bad. His win rate is still terrible, but when you see a good Medivh player, they can absolutely wreck face and be incredibly powerful. I mean, if you've watched any of the MVP Black series recently, MVP Black's rich, probably the best player in the world, on probably the best team in the world, but it's just insane how good he is on Medivh. It's scary. People are just banning it away from him now. It's that good. So, I mean, I've been saying this about Medivh for a long time. It's like, he could be so strong if people are good enough to play him. It's just, when will they get good enough to play him? And when will teams be good enough to play with the portals and stuff? Once you get there, he's going to be really good for the moment. Tier 2 is probably fairly reasonable. Now, finally, we've got Tier 3. I think most of these heroes are pretty bad. Abathur, a bit of an exception to that. There's certainly a niche for Abathur. The global presence is great. Very powerful with certain heroes. Cloning certain heroes can be really good. Uh, or empowering melee assassins like Illidan, like the Butcher, like Kerrigan, uh, like Muradin even combos really well. Or Chen or Artanis. A lot of heroes that combo well with him. Um, it's it's going to depend. I don't think he's that great in Hero League. He tends to flourish more in a team environment with comms and stuff like that, voice comms. But yeah, maybe, maybe in Hero League you can pick, uh, bust him out. Gaslow as well, maybe with the turrets on certain maps, just setting up, like, if the enemy team's going to have a really hard time pushing into a, a turret and fortified area, then maybe. Generally, though, no. <laughs> Generally, though, he's not super useful. He's very vulnerable. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, it's all about the turrets. And when the turrets work, they work great. But when they're not working great, he's kind of useless. So, yeah, I'm not sure about Gaza. We'll see exactly. But I feel tier 3 is pretty fair. <laughs> uh, and then these, I think these three heroes are really, really bad at the moment. Nazebo got nerfed a lot, and he just kind of sucks. I don't see any reason to take him over literally any of the other sustained range damage dealers. I feel like they just all do what he does, but better. Uh, Asmodan. I mean, he could do a bit of a split push thing, but he's pretty weak at it overall. Been nerfed a lot too. Hopefully he gets buffed or tweaked soon. Just changed a bit. Maybe reworked. I don't know. And then Murky. <laughs> Unbelievably, he's been terrible and he's got nerfed even more. Octograb, you can now stop it by killing him. Oh my god. He's probably the worst hero in the game right now. He gets countered so easily in the draft. I mean, they can just pick up like Li Ming or I don't know. There's so many heroes that do so well against this guy. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like Murky's pretty terrible, but there you go. I'm sad because I like him, but that's the case. Well, there you go, guys. That is the tier list. In fact, let me actually go over it one final time just so we can see everything here. So we've got the Warriors. I think Warriors are in a really good spot right now. We have the Assassins. I think the weakest they've ever been, but we still got some very powerful ones. And I mean, you always need Assassins pretty much. So there you go. We have, oh, excuse me, we have got the supports. I think a pretty strict tier list here. Pretty accurate, I feel, on this one, uh, looking at where they're going to be. Uh, you're going to mostly see like these three or four heroes right here with dabbles of these, and maybe the occasional one here. 
And then finally the specialists, such a divided ta uh, tier list right here between really, really good ones, really pretty bad ones. And yeah, it's kind of a funny way to be. But there you go, guys. That is the tier list. I hope you found it useful. 30 minutes. Okay, we went a bit over time. Whoops, the daisies. Oh, well. Uh, give a like, though, if you liked it. And uh, let me know what you think of the new structure. I think it's pretty useful, actually, breaking it down in terms of roles. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time for more Here's the Storm. Bye-bye.